Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. Welcome to Wise Talk. Today's guest is absolutely sensational. There are very few people that can master photography and painting and do both well. And that's what today's guest is all about. I'd like to welcome Mark Batista to the show. It's great to be here. I'm so happy to see you. I met you um, maybe about a month ago, mm -hmm. a mutual at an art opening. We both had images in. Yep. And neither of us won first place, I might add. I was a little your, depressed. The image of the owl was wonderful. Oh, thank you. Job. You great remember job. it. And a uh, person in common s mentioned you to me because we have a background that's very similar. What What do you do now that I used uh, to do? Well, I'm, I'm a teacher. I, I serve as an art teacher in, in the West Haven school system. Yes, uh, and I used to teach in West Haven, so it was wonderful having that connection. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get right into what you do. Let's get started with, um, we have an image that you that's going to be coming up on a monitor and it's a picture the same picture we have of this gentleman okay. behind us where was that taken uh, it was taken in a small town in Italy called Pizarro and how did that image come about uh, I was uh, walking the street early one morning and uh, just just met the gentleman and asked if I could take his photograph and uh, he was kind enough to, to let me take a few shots how did you elicit that expression from him? Um, it was just uh, uh, really, really from him. Uh, was just sort of waited for the moment to, to, to come and, and take the shot. And do you engage with the participant? Uh, uh, usually I do. Uh, usually um, uh, when I'm in the U.S. it's a little bit easier to engage. Uh, my Italian's a little rusty so uh, it was a little difficult to uh, to engage with them, but, but use a lot of hand motions and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because if if I'm traveling and I and I want to take a picture of someone in another country, I just point to the camera, mm -hmm. and usually as a woman they let me let me yeah. do it. But do you have any issues with that as a um, follow? Yeah, occasionally I, I try to shy away from uh, photographing uh, children or women alone. Uh, it's a little easier to. Uh, oh, um, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah, to, to, I shoot a lot of the elderly, uh, so they they they're a little bit more relaxed about uh, having their photographs taken. I was in Casablanca shooting a little girl, and she came up to me and gave me a kiss. And I looked and saw her grandfather, and he went like this. Oh, that's I, beautiful. But I, that's because of a woman. Mm -hmm. they, they would yes, never do yes. that with you. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just love this particular image, and what you, you. and what you were able to evoke from this person is. It's just phenomenal. I'm going to move on to another image that you have, a JPEG, called A House Divided. And very interestingly, um, this was inspired by a book. Can you uh, explain that? Yes. Actually, uh, my uncle had given me a, uh, an old antique book uh, about the Civil War. And the, um, uh, when I went to uh, reach for the book, I had the book stored in my garage, I found that the book was actually split into two. And uh, to me, that was very symbolic of what's happening today in, in our current political climate. Um, there's a lot of divisive, divisiveness happening. And um, I decided to make a composition based on this book that was split. So the book actually became um, used as a base for, for the, the composition and design. And I started to use other elements in the picture um, symbolically to uh, represent what's happening in, in, in our culture today. Now, is this a painting or a photograph? This is a, pho this is a photograph. This um, is a photograph. So looking back at it, you have all the all these elements in your house, or did you go out and look for um, them? Most of them I had in my house. I actually had to uh, purchase a couple of items that I was interested in on eBay uh, to just complete the, uh, the arrangement. So can you explain some of the images uh, Sure. Um, if, if you look at the child's block, uh, yes. there's an image of an airplane on there. Yes. And the, and the, the airplane is pointed towards a, the rectangular domino. Um, that represents uh, what the tragedy of 9-11 and what happened during oh. that time. Um, also, color is used symbolically. Um, oh. The colored marbles, uh, rainbow colored marbles, the black and white marbles, represent some of the uh, issues with uh, gender and, and uh, race in, in our country. Um, and uh, also the, there's a shell casing um, and the number two on a block and that re represents uh, um, some of these issues about public safety and the need to protect our rights, the Second Amendment rights and, and the ability to protect ourselves and our family. Um, Very interesting. Uh, I, I need to ask you a little bit about the creative process. So you, you saw that you had the book in the garage. I had the book in the garage and the book inspired me um, uh, to create this image. Um, because the book was about the Civil War, actually the book was so old, um, the title wasn't even about the Civil War, it said the uh, history of the American Rebellion. Um, I, I remembered a speech that uh, President Lincoln gave when he was uh, nominated for the uh, uh, 
uh, the presidency. And um, I think the quote was actually, um, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And I just felt that, that that represented what's happening now in our culture politically and uh, through the media. Um, there's so much divisiveness going on. So this is sort of a call for unity to uh, try to um, find a, a common, common bond um, and not be so divisive in, in the, our dealings with others. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I need to ask you, do you sketch it out ahead of time? Uh, yes, or do, or you um, do sketch because it? I'm also a painter. A lot of my images I'll, I'll kind of work out on, a, on paper, um, even sketch out some of the lighting that I'm looking for. And, um, and then it, it progresses. Uh, the, the actual initial, initial sketch looks a lot different than what the uh, ultimate um, photo ended up being. Because I interview a lot of artists and photographers, and I find the creative process very interesting. And the more I do these interviews, the more I realize there's pre-sketches or sketches that people do. Yeah, it's it's um, a great way to kind of get your ideas out and um, kind of kind of work out some of the design problems before actually actually creating the setup. Um, so I, my my notebooks are full of sketches and ideas and. You know what I'm going to have to buy? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have yeah, to buy get a, a sketchbook. Sketch yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, you're <laughs> causing me to go spend some money. That's very interesting about that photograph. I real Has that won any prizes? Uh, uh, this one, uh, I, I ventured it at the uh, Salma Gundy Club in, in New York um, in, in one of their shows, but it hasn't, um, now, hasn't won a prize. Now, what's the name of that club? Uh, the Salma Gundy Club. Now, that club, I was told, and I feel... I know. Um, sorry that I'm so ignorant, but that I was told that club is what I, the way I would say it: shishi poo poo pa pa. It's it's a it's a it's a well known uh, club. Uh, and to get into the club, you have to be very 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 yeah, very it, good. It, it was a long process. Um, I had to uh, submit my work and uh, my resume, and it was uh, judged. Uh, both my photographs and my paintings were were, were judged, and um, luckily I was uh, elected into the into the club. Well, I'm impressed, and to think I recognized your work right <laughs> off as being good. So, um, well, congratulations oh, on that. Thanks. I'd like to go on to the next picture, Child's Play. And this particular image um, in Child's Play, you have um, you have some things where there, there's a contrast. Could you explain um, this a little well, bit for me? Well, this is actually it's a tribute to the men and women uh, that serve in our country. Um, again, some of the objects are used symbolically. Uh, I, st I started with uh, actually some uh, um, so, uh, objects uh, from my dad's uh, career in the Marine Corps, uh, his, his cover, his hat, and the uh, Eagle Globe and Anchor, and I arranged them with uh, children's toys. And this is a statement about how in times of war, our, our youth are the ones that really carry the burden. Um, you know, mm. our men and women that are, that are going off to war are, 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 are our young um, and uh, have, have so much respect for them. Uh, so I wanted to sort of juxtapose the, uh, the children's um, elements that represent innocence with, uh, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the hat from the Marine Corps. Um, even the angle of the flag, um, there's a famous photograph of the raising the flag in Iwo Jima. Yes, Where, where yes. the Marines are on the hilltop um, raising the flag. Flags at a very uh, steep angle. Yes, um, yes. I intentionally had the flag in this design to kind of uh, mirror, mirror that flag from that photograph. Um, well, you know, what I'm thinking is this is amazing, and I didn't realize how much thought went into some, because I, I love to take pictures, yeah. but I'm sort of like, oh, ching, 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 and move on. Yeah. But you, when you do your still lives, you have a lot there's, of... Yeah, there's a lot, lot, lot of thought behind it, and, and hopefully it, it, it's something that looks beautiful and, and has beautiful colors and lines, but also hopefully there's some type of a meaning. Uh, behind the uh, the objects that I'm selecting or, or the way that I'm photographing them. Well, um, you're giving me a lot of information mm -hmm. to grow as okay. a photographer. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to move into the next one. Uh, I'm going to say Azure. A okay, uh, I, I say Azure, Azure, uh, Azure, which basically means blue. So maybe blue. I should change the title to blue. It would no, be a lot easier. Azure, Azure. Yeah. <laughs> Azure, Azure. Okay. So I was looking at this earlier when they were putting on the monitor, and I found it. I've seen a lot of people take pictures of um, is it conch shells? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen anybody put a marble inside. What was the big yeah, behind um, this? I, I was just playing around with this. There's no great deep meaning uh, in this image, but uh, was just playing around with line, shape, and color. And uh, a lot of my work tends to be on the darker tones of of, of the spectrum. 
and I wanted to work with uh, some colors that are a little bit lighter. And uh, to, to me, the, the sort of the sandy colors and the shell and, and the blues, they remind me of, uh, of the beach. Um, when I was a kid, I spent my summers uh, on the beach in West Haven. My mom would take me, my sister, my cousins down to the beach almost every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, after work, my dad would come and, and meet us. And it uh, just brings back uh, some, some memories of, uh, of my childhood. Now, when I look at that, the background, how did you get that background? Uh, the backgrounds I actually custom make. Um, I actually uh, paint them. Um, and uh, backgrounds are very, very important when you're, when you're working on still lifes. Um, a background could either um, make your objects stand out or they could make your objects uh, almost seem to fade and blend in into, uh, into the background and, and not be seen. Uh, so I use a process with uh, brushes and rollers and sponges uh, to create um, whole sets of different kinds of backgrounds. Now I have, uh, you're also, I understand, you're going to be giving a workshop at the Brantford Art Center. Uh, yes in photography mm -hmm. on macro but part of that is you're going to be showing the students how to create backgrounds mm -hmm. so this is an example of what you have yes and, and the participants will even have an opportunity uh, we're going to start the workshop out creating uh, original backgrounds custom backgrounds so everybody will be able to um, have their own background to bring well, I could just them. take these. Yeah, okay, I, yeah. they're, they're yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm no, so I'm noticing that, you know, you have uh, there, I'm just noticing that you have different backgrounds and there's another one that's darker. Yeah, some, some have a lot of texture and I'll kind of play with that um, to, 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 to work with the design and some are a little bit more smooth um, depending on, on what I'm photographing. Well, that takes people's work up a, a significant level when they start creating their own backgrounds and they have that information to, to take home with them besides just doing the macro photography. Very interesting. Um, now, JPEGs, we have a, another JPEG of something called Flower and Stem, and that's coming up on the monitor. Flower and okay, stem, yeah, and, and this is a photograph. Uh, this is a photograph as well, and um, again, interested really in color, the color relationships. Uh, they're they're um, colors that relate well to, to each other. Um, every color in there has a little touch of yellow, you know, the yellow, the lime green, um, the orange. Uh, so I'm, in this image, I'm really responding to the, to, to the lines and the colors. Um, and I would also say your focal point is not what usually people photograph. They usually people photograph take a flower and they go head on. Mm -hmm. You're underneath the flower and yeah. shooting the back side yes. of the flower. And, and letting some of the light actually come through the background. It's, it's the flower is actually backlit. backlit now, which, do, are you doing this in your home studio or um, is this outside? This, uh, let's see, this flower is actually, in my, my wife has a, 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 a garden at home. So this is actually in the, in the garden at home. That, uh, it's shooting good is. to have a wife who grows you know, flowers. Yeah, and she shares her flowers, you yeah. usually, which is, so which is that's, good. It's good to have that, because that was a beautiful image. Uh, the next one we have image coming up is called Curves and Drops on the mm -hmm. screen. We're going to see, now this one, first of all, I love the color of the flower. Mm -hmm. But this, I, I, so I love the color. You attract my attention with the color and the green, but... Um, the shape of it. Yeah, I, I was really responding to the to the to the, the, the curves and the lines, and use a shallow depth of field, which only allows a little bit of the flower to be in sharp focus, and the rest of the background to just sort of fade off into a into a blur. Now I'm wondering, is that a real water drop, or did you spray um, it with a? Those were actu actually uh, real water drops. Um, you know, photographers will sometimes use uh, you know a syringe with water or glycerin, uh, but um, I had taken that in the morning. Shh. Those are oh, secrets. secrets, I better not. Uh, don't, <laughs> sure. don't let the audience know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes they also use a um, spray bottle. Do you really use a syringe with glycerin? Um, I, I've never tried. I've, I've heard about it, but I've never tried it. Because I, I don't it. use glycerin. I just use just water. Use water. <laughs> so that was interesting. Now, I want to mention that you're a member of the North Haven Camera Club. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a local camera club, a uh, great club. Uh, we have um, members who are professional photographers as well as people that are just starting out and using their their cell phones and uh, it's a club where everybody's helping one another uh, we, we learn from each other and uh, have friendly competitions every month well the second um Art opening that I saw you. At. I saw it the first one. Okay. It was one. This was in uh, the Voice of Art in Cheshire. Which, yes, yes, yes. And then the second art opening was here in Brantford mm -hmm. at the Brantford Art Center, yes. 
And little did I know, I didn't know it was the North Haven Camera Club, and there's a lot of people who are members of both, and there are also people who, one fellow used to be my service manager at uh, the Honda oh, dealership. The Honda. Oh, Joe, yes, yeah, yes, yes. I, And I love him. I, I still am mad at him for leaving. Oh. I, I'm still, I'm trying to get over it, but it's hard. But um, the fun part is I knew a lot of people there, and you're, I didn't realize that. It's, um, it's, it's a wonderful place, and, and Yvonne Gordon, the, uh, uh, the owner of the gallery, is, is so generous of, of, her, of her space and her time. Uh, this is the second time that she's allowed our group to uh, to show there. Now you sit on your, you have a website. What is uh, your yes, website? Yes, it's uh, www.markbatista.com. Okay, now on your website, because before I did a pre-interview with you in my office, okay. um, I was reading what you said, and you enjoy creating a visual dialogue between the two disciplines in art and painting. Mm -hmm. What does that mean uh, exactly? I, I find that my, my photography influences my, my painting, and my painting also influences my photography. Um, year, years ago, I used to just use photography um, as a tool for my painting. Um, I would need to get some reference, so I would go out and, and shoot some subjects, or uh, if I was painting a picture of an older person, uh, I wouldn't be able to paint them in my studio late at night, uh, so I needed to work from photographs. Um, and I was working um, uh, with, with straight film back then. Um, eventually, when digital cameras came out, I decided to, to explore that and uh, fell in love with photography as well. So, so I'm, now I'm doing a lot of photography, almost as much photography as I am as painting. Hmm. And, uh, well, not only did you have photographs at the Brantford Art Center, you had paintings. Yes. And I was walking out with a friend of mine, and he was... Um, he told me, you're, you're a phenomenal painter, and I have total respect for his opinion, and I'm learning a lot about painting from him. And he pointed out a few details to me, um, and his, he mentioned to me that, um, I'm not sure if I see it up here, maybe it's a JPEG, uh, the JPEG of the coffee, tea, and milk, and that you have such detail in your paintings that they look like photographs, um, and actually I thought they were. Uh, they're, 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 they're very much. Actually, um, this JPEG that we have on screen is actually a photograph. That is a photograph. photograph. And this photograph was actually inspired from a painting that I did a few years uh, previously um, using the same subject. Oh, now, interesting. So this, this is the actual uh, oil painting. Um, so you did the painting first, the, mm -hmm. and then you did the, the photo photograph. So that's almost in a in reverse order that I, I usually do, do a yes. photograph first, and uh, so that's sort of how how my paintings and photographs. There's there's that dialogue running back and forth, and I sort of bounce from one media to the to the other. Um, sometimes working the subjects, working an idea. Now, where did you get your original education from? Um, I, I attended a was blessed to attend Pierre College of Art. And in they, Hamden, that in Hamden. That's, that's not yes, still yes, they're still open. Oh, they're still they're open. Still open. Yes. Oh, sorry, Pierre. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I haven't heard of them. Yes, yes. And uh, I, I was working with some some wonderful uh, uh, top artists and, and educators uh, around the uh, country. Uh, Ken Davies, um, who's a preeminent still life painter, uh, was was one of my teachers and became a very, very good close friend. Um, John Massimino, uh, who's still painting in East Haven, uh, was a tremendous, tremendous teacher and a big influence on the way that I, I use design in, in my work. Um, Bob Zappalardi is there. Uh, Rudolph Zallinger, uh, you might know Rudolph's work at the Peabody Museum, the large um, murals of the dinosaurs. Yes! Um, uh, he, he painted that when he was a student back at Yale. Um, and his wife and his son were also uh, professors there up here. Um, wow. It was just a wonderful school. Um, learned so much from the, the, uh, the, the, the professors, learned so much from the other students. It's, it was a, a great environment. Well, I would love to have you back with one or two of your other professors and we can would, talk about the interrelationship mm -hmm. and the growth and development because you've sp I've spoken to you a few times now and your comments about them are just uh, inspiring. Mm -hmm. If only one of my former students would speak about that about me. <laughs> but the interesting thing, the real interesting thing, is the director for this show, Doug, he's in the control room, he was your student. Yes, yes he was. He was uh, in one of my first uh, uh, classes that I taught at uh, Style School in West Haven. And he was in a wonderful fifth grade class. Uh, 
uh, have, have wonderful memories of, of him and, and, his, and his classmates at that school. Now, this is just between us, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Was he a bad boy? Not at all, not at all. Never, never gave me a problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't let that go to your head, Douglas. Okay, I'd like to move on. So then you have, there's another style of painting, Trump. Mm -hmm. Uh, Loy? Tr Trompe Loy. It's Trompe uh, Loy. French, which means fool the eye, uh, and it's a very uh, realistic uh, type of painting. Very, very uh, sharp focused uh, painting. Um, use of a lot of detail. Now, w would the shoe be an example? Yes, the of shoe, that? shoe shoe would be an example of it, um, especially some of the de detail. Um, like around the texture of the shoe. Now he's going to do a close-up of the okay. shoe. And uh, Rick, Richard pointed out to me that even on the shoe, you could see like the end of the, this is a painting, mm -hmm. yes. but you could see the individual laces. Yeah, it's kind of uh, hard to see because it's very dark, but there, there's laces going around um, this area of the shoe and, and this area of the shoe. Yes, yes. And uh, each, each lace had to be had to be painted. Um, and he also mentioned to me the, the, the are the buttons? Uh, yes, the the the, uh, the the buttons as well. Um, had to make sure that the reflections, uh, you know, work well with the design. And, Where did you find this shoe? Um, at an old antique shop. Uh, I used to collect all kinds of little little antiques that I would end up using as subjects of my paintings. Um, mm. Luckily, I didn't throw them away. I still have them. So, so so occasionally they'll come back and I'll revisit them again. And you know, maybe, maybe this subject will be a photograph again someday or another painting. Well, I have to tell you, people always say clean out, but anytime I throw anything out, I want it. Yeah. You know, I want yeah. it a couple days later. Yeah. So, and I, we also noticed the wood grain. Now, this, is this something that we discussed earlier mm -hmm. called a worm's eye view? Uh, yes, a worm's eye view is when um, you're looking at the subject from a, from a low angle. Um, gives a little bit more prominence to the subjects that you're working on rather than looking at them above. Now, and actually now I, we, I, now I know where I kind of got this because as a photographer out in the field, you have to get down at the level of what you're mm -hmm. photographing. Yeah, spend a lot of time on my belly, yeah. you know, but shooting But you don't shooting do things. that when you're painting. Uh, no, with, with painting it would be tough, tough to, uh, to paint on my belly, so um, I, I'm usually actually raising the subjects uh, higher. Uh, so when I'm actually looking at them and painting them from life, I could see them at the angle that I want. Well, that makes a lot of sense. That makes total <laughs> sense. And then um, we have, I want to talk about the image behind me. I don't, okay. is that on a JPEG? Uh, or? I don't believe that's on a JPEG. I think it's uh, just, just. Okay, um, tell me, right now this one, because maybe because it's right behind me, <laughs> but this I found fascinating because you had such, this is an example again of Trump. Uh, yes, yes, uh, sharp, sharp focus, still life painting, Trump, Trump. Lloyd. Because you have, you show the uh, chip uh, on, the chip on the hair? Yeah, there's there's chip and there's wood grain and was interested, again, this was a, an image where I actually lit the subjects from the back. I had my lamp uh, positioned behind the, uh, the, um, the, the frame of the glass and the light was coming coming from them. So I was really interested in the transparencies of the glass and, and how the shadows played, played across uh, the items. That's interesting and that you say that because when you were out of the room working, we're working with the director, mm -hmm. um, I, because um, I was looking at the painting with someone and that was pointed out to me and it makes total sense that you had it lit from the back. Yeah, yeah. when you see the shadow on the base of, of the uh, bottle, you can see that that shadow is coming towards us rather than, no, normally the shadows would either fall to the side or behind the subject. Yes, yes, very, very, and you even can just barely see the words on the bottle. Yeah, yeah, it was an old peel, uh, peel label on the bottle that you can barely see the, the uh, the, the words on there. Yes, yes. Now, I'm not quite sure about how much time we have left, but um, I'm just looking to, I, we, have a, we have a picture of a woman with a braid on a JPEG? Okay, uh, yes. Um, it was a woman that I painted um, in uh, the southern part of Italy uh, called Buccino. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very, very attracted to the uh, older, older faces. They have Thank a lot of you know, <laughs> they have a lot of history. Hey, ha, ha. <laughs> the, you know, they're, they're, the, the lines on their face just just tell a story. And uh, we, we were uh, luckily we went to a uh, uh, on a family trip with uh, Vinnie Maritoli, who runs these uh, wine lover tours. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was able to bring the family to see some of our ancestral ancestral um, homes. And uh, we were there in southern Italy, and they had a three day festival. And uh, people were marching through the streets. They had performers coming th coming through. They were marching the saint through the streets. And uh, this woman was um, there. And uh, I did a painting of her. And then um, actually later on went to the original photograph and then 
did a, a, an example of the, the photograph behind me as well, um, taking what I learned through the painting and then a, sort of applying it to the photograph. Now that's so interesting to yeah. me that you cross mediums like that. Mm -hmm. And also a word you just said is what you learned from the painting. And you, you obviously work with Photoshop. Yes, yes. Are you um, accomplished in that? Uh, no, um, I'm just sort of pick, picking up as much as I can. Um, Milford Photos offered some great workshops that I've picked things up. And then through the North Haven Camera Club, there are some members that are really highly uh, skilled in, in Photoshop mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of experimenting and playing with Photoshop, I take classes, I work on it, yeah. then I don't touch it and I forget everything. That's the problem, yeah. That's you have the to, problem. Have to keep, keep I do up have with a it. few issues. Yeah. Now, we don't have that much time yeah. left, so I want to ask you if someone wanted to contact you, how would they do that? The uh, best way is to uh, reach me at my website at www.markbatista.com. Um, and just uh, shoot, they have a link to shoot me an email uh, through, okay. through the website. And um, is there, do you give, I'm, I'm wondering, do you give painting lessons? Uh, yes, I, I do teach privately uh, painting lessons and, and photography uh, lessons, one-on-one uh, -on -one photography uh, lessons as well. Now, um, when you give painting lessons, what medium do you give it in? Oil or what uh, color? Or actually, uh, pretty much uh, pencil, oil, and, and acrylic. Um, but if somebody does want to learn pastel or, or, or acrylic um, as well as watercolor, I can you can I do can that. that yeah. What do you prefer personally to work in? Personally, I, I love the oils and, and the watercolors. The oils because I could really get in and, and create some really sharp focus detail. And the watercolor for the fluidity and the spontaneity of, of the media. Um, it's nice to bounce back and forth to be really, really tight and then be a little bit more expressive with, with the paint. Yeah. Well, um, I think that's amazing. It really is amazing. I, I'm getting more and more interested in art. And I... I imagine myself as the next Van Gogh, okay. you know, I'm just saying. It's all related, yeah, it's all it's, connected. <laughs> it is. And so I, um, if you have this contact information, would you just say it one more time? Okay, it's uh, www.markbatista.com. And if you forget that and you need to contact BCTV, they'll put you in contact with me or they'll send me the information and you can contact me at jmdteach at comcast.net. Thank you uh, thank for being you. on the show. It been was a, a wonderful a treat. Thank you. Thank you.